Hey everyone, welcome to the Oasis Podcast. I'm your host, Miss AJ. Thanks for tuning in. An oasis is something that provides refuge, relief, or pleasant contrast, and that is exactly what you can find tuning into the Oasis Podcast. This will be a space where I and special guests will be cultivating intentional and honest conversations about life's journey. So what are you waiting for? Subscribe now. Also follow us on Instagram at the Oasis Podcast. That's T-H-E-O-A-S-I-S Podcast. Welcome back to the fifth episode of the Oasis Podcast. Thank you all for joining us. So today I have a special guest joining us and Mr. Vision. I'm allowed to speak now? Yes. Oh, okay. Hey, y'all. They call me Vision. Mr. King Vision. Uh, Brooklyn native. That's about it, right? That's what it is. Oh, if what you want to contact me share? after this, if you think I'm, um, you know, like how I speak or whatever, you could contact uh, Miss AJ. <laughs> don't don't contact me. <laughs> you can contact me uh, at the Oasis Podcast, and if Indeed. you have any questions for Vision, uh, feel free to pass them on there. Don't send me your questions. Send them to AJ. Don't no questions for me. Oh, forward all of it to AJ. Okay, I she, think she's I think, my agent. I think they got that. Awesome. <laughs> so, um, how are you doing? How was your week? Uh, my week was a uh, splendid. Outside of, of being sick all week, you know. Uh, very restful week. Yours? How was yours? Um, uh, I had a pretty, pretty busy week. Um, it was busy. It was eventful. It was enlightening. Eventful and enlightening. That, yeah. That sounds deep. Yeah. What about your week? Was eventful and enlightening? So, did some motivational interviewing workshop at, at work. And usually these workshops or trainings are like, terrible on it like a drag Mm -hmm. but this one was actually really good like it was very insightful personally and professionally um and so it made the workshops kind of breeze right on through it didn't really feel like you were sitting there all day which was awesome because i get antsy at these things Mm -hmm. but i was engaged and it was engaging and it was nice was that the motivational or the enlightening part (laughs) both <laughs> okay, okay. Um, the motivation and enlightening i hear you yeah it was both um the work week was short because of the training so that was also nice mm-hmm. only had real only two real days of actual work work um the other days were just spent listening and learning so that was cool mm. nice change in pace i guess you could say mm, so you had a good week but you were sick so how did that go are you feeling better uh no i'm not feeling better but i'm here um, I appreciate you for that. Uh, I try. I think I'm a decent human being. I try. Oh, just decent? Decent. Okay. You hear that, ladies? I'm decent. <laughs> just decent, though. Yeah. Just decent. Just decent. <laughs> just enough. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, work week was cut short. I have a four-day work week anyways. So, um, shortened that to two days, and I went bowling on Wednesday. That's pretty dope. Nice. Um, How was that? It was interesting. Very interesting. Interesting. Say the least. Yeah, you know. Can you elaborate? Me, my best friend, and his uh, lady and their in laws. What? Well, mm. His in laws, her. You know, it was an interesting bowling experience. I enjoyed myself, to say the least. Mm. And then I went to the emergency room the very next day. And Oh, wow. Okay. That, was that. That, <laughs> that transition. Okay. Indeed. But I don't want to give the, 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 the real world too much info on me. Okay, okay. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you are better now right um can i answer that at the end of the podcast uh, okay sure but yeah. I, i'm gonna need all that energy you know for, for this conversation we're about to have uh, uh, about dating oh, I'll while, bring you some, while 30 i'll definitely bring you some energy okay well then all right yeah, let's you, bring you got this. on the back some energy let's go let's get going <laughs> i'll give you a shot of something if you need it a shot of something please or something right? song, song. <laughs> if it's cool <laughs> All right, so so the topic today uh, for today's episode is dating while thirty. Um, and you're thirty, mm, AJ. I am thirty something. Thirty yes. something. <laughs> you, you wear it well, woman. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you. You wear it well as well. So I try. You try. But I'm barely thirty, y'all. Oh, you bit. Be- oh, you're barely. Yeah, you're thirty something. 
I, I got my first digit in 30s. So. Oh, oh, yeah? Okay. Well, so let's start it off, right? Um, the current experience while, dating experience while in your 30s. How's that been for you, Vision? Um, dating in my 30s has been interesting to say the least. Mm -hmm. Um, I think me personally, I now am more aware of the things I want and what I'm looking for. Um, I'm more willing to explore to find those things. Um, while also knowing and understanding and respecting time. I also not waste my time um, in the midst of exploring, you know, this is okay, very easy to get engulfed in the the, the search and um, just respecting my time, even though I know what I want and I want to search, just know when to stop that search and mm. knowing that this person isn't what I'm looking for and things along those, along those lines. I think there's been a certain level of wisdom I've obtained um, in my 20s from dating and um my 30s would be me applying it for the most part okay okay so i guess for me um going on my second i guess full year of like actually dating or in starting your 30s? starting my second year in my 30s okay dating. i'm still trying to guess your age oh anyway <laughs> um Last year was interesting, um, coming out of a four plus year, years relationship and starting to date was very interesting, um, dealing and processing, kind of grieving that relationship, but then also knowing that you wanted to move forward. So I was like, you know, I think it was an interesting space, um, and dating was interesting because of that as well. Um, met a lot of different people, different walks of life, different experiences. Um, and it was inter interesting in getting to know people, which I think is the first time really mm -hmm. um, I dated, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, like, And not like go on one or two dates and it's like, oh, we're a thing. But like, let me take a few months to get to know you. Um, that's the first time I actually started that process and I learned... You, I learned so much about people just slowing down the pace. Mm -hmm. And um, do, because of that, I learned a lot about myself too. Mm -hmm. um, and this year, so last year I met quite a few people, again, different experiences. Actually, towards the end of the year, I was like, I'm over this. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. um, because it, it was a lot. Like, it was a lot. Like, I dated a lot of people. And I, and by when I say date, I know people have different de different definitions of dating. You've been on dates, I, right? Exactly, mm -hmm. on dates, literally talking to people, getting to know them. It doesn't mean being sexually intimate or anything like that. Literally, just talking to people. Um, it's exhausting, you know. Um, and it was it was interesting too. I can't say that it wasn't like a terrible experience, but. Um, it's it's definitely a different space to be in when you know what you want and what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. um, dating with that type of intention than like in the twenties when you're like, mm, you're nice, you look you look good or <laughs> whatever. <laughs> like, okay, you know, let's see what happens. Um, it's definitely different, and it could. It, I found it starting to be frustrating. I'm not gonna lie. Towards the end of the year, but then I also got to a place of peace of like, you know what, I'm okay. You know, mm -hmm. if I did or if I didn't. So I think I started this year. In that space. Mm -hmm. And I think it also made the process of dating a lot calmer and easier too for me in some regards. Um, and then it did in others. <laughs> um, which in I think others. I kind of touched on. Yeah, I touched on it in the last episode. I mean, we, we can touch on it again, I guess, a little further in the conversation. But, yeah. So, yeah. Um, so, I know we both mentioned it being different. And then dating in our twenties. So, what are the differences for you? Um, well, I spent a large portion of my twenties in a relationship. Um, gosh, uh, I spent the I was maybe till about twenty, maybe twenty one to twenty eight ish. I was in. Uh, 
long term relationship. Um, but being in that relationship taught me so much about intentions, about dating um someone. Um you know, it's very easy to in your twenties to think you got it all figured out. Um think you know your career paths, you think you know the, the anything in life, you think you know where you're heading. And then um I think that's when you're really starting to experience the things that life has to offer and the things that life can take away and the um I think in my twenties I wasn't quite aware of what life had to offer and um the things that life can take away and just general life experience that I think is important to uh, to know or to to have lived prior to committing to a, a, a rather serious relationship. Um and I I've learned to respect those said things that I mentioned earlier during that process of dating in that long term relationship. Then afterwards it was more so um just getting my feet wet, understanding what it is to date again and to um to now have witnessed what I liked and what I didn't like and to uh search for that when I became ready to start searching again full time. Um, which was for the most part maybe like another two or three years before I decided like maybe I want to start dating seriously. Um, afterwards, but uh, generally the life experiences was a big part of uh, guiding me and um, educating me of the things that I did like um, in in regards to finding a partner and the traits and stuff like that. But as as well as uh, deciding time, when is the time ideal? I think is a big thing. I get so wrapped up with being lonely and we're like, oh, you know, loneliness means I'm tired of. of being single when, you know, that's normally not the case. Um, mm. At least from my experience, you know, just because you're lonely doesn't mean you're ready to be in a relationship. Absolutely. Um, so timing was another thing I had to learn. Like, mm. is this the best time for you in your life to allow somebody to, to um, become part of your life? Mm. I think that's that's an important point, a very important point. Um Feeling lonely or alone doesn't necessarily mean that you're ready for a relationship. I had to learn that for sure. Um, but then I also, we, we share a parallel. Like, I, I, in you saying it made me think, like, oh, wow, I did spend a majority of my 20s in a relationship. Mm-hmm. Um, I think all together, I probably had all, maybe like two and a half years. I'm being generous and saying maybe three years that I was single in my 20s. Yeah, I'm in That's, the same boat. Wow. Thinking about it? Wow. I'm like, in the same boat. can you imagine, though, how like how much change you experience in your 20s, but then to be with someone experiencing that change? Wow. Mm. Wow. There's some real stuff right there. Yeah. Yeah. Like, um, this is a rain of thought, but I feel like sharing it. Um, I think I read somewhere, like, a study on, like, marriage or something of that nature and it said that people who get married in their 20s are more likely um to get divorced than those who marry in their 30s mm. and that's due and they gave different reasons of why that is and and one of the reasons i recall is due to the fact that yeah because it, your 20s is usually that time you spend getting to figuring out who the hell you are mm-hmm. and so what ends up happening is people grow apart because they grow up technically Mm -hmm. right and then that's why marriages tend to end because people feel that that person has changed because they have changed literally um but then also in the the course of time though people are expected to change too you have to change Um, yeah and you know just granted not just in your 20s is when you're growing up it changes but in your 30s and your 40s or 50s i think the concept of change is is something that's so frequent that we take it for granted we don't think about change Mm -hmm. um when Considering uh, relationships, but they stated that in your thirties that you do still change. They, they did mention that. However, they said the difference between the twenties and the thirties is that um, you're pretty much like the the concrete things about you in your thirties mm-hmm. don't don't change. change. You like know they, who you 20. are exactly. And so, I guess if you get married then, or you build, you know, that type of um, partnership in your 30s, that fundamental piece of the person is still there. And so mm-hmm. I think it's easier to roll out with the other changes. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah, that makes that makes a lot of freaking sense. Mm-hmm. Like, I was 
ooh child. Looking back, I was a hot ass mess in my twenties. <laughs> like, you know, like outside looking in, whatever. Like, for if I was looking for perspective of as a child, I was. No, my mother probably would disagree with that. But <laughs> in my opinion, I thought I was a pretty good kid. Or like in your twenties, growing up, being you know that type. But I'm. I was a hot ass mess in intimate relationships. I was a mess. I was a mess mess. I went from like two different extremes being like quiet and not knowing how to express myself and just taking things and holding in feelings to being the complete opposite of literally just vomiting everything that came to mind. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, I was all over the place. Um, mm -hmm. Wow. I don't know. That just stuck out to me, that parallel that we have. But 20, man. So, yeah, my experience dating in my <laughs> 20s <laughs> was... uh. Yeah, uh, it's supposed to be your twenties. Is supposed to be messy. Look, ugh. in your, your early twenties, you're f still in college, fresh out of college. Mm. You don't know where your careers are. You haven't even lived by yourself, like really, really lived by yourself yet. Um, you might have had like the dorm experience if you're lucky. Maybe you might have like lived off campus for a little bit, but you never really lived lived by yourself. You you haven't experienced a career yet. You're building towards that. You might own a car. You probably don't. You're driving your parents' car. This is like the, the the being able to understand and, and finally start fulfilling responsibilities. It's a it's almost impossible to not have a to not just be spewing out everything and not be emotional to not be all over. I don't think you did anything wrong in your twenties. I mean, no, it's not that. It was it's <coughs> just like um um like I always had this idea like. When you're younger, you always think your 20s are so old, right? Mm -hmm. Right? Like, Can't it's wait so to get out your mama's house. It's so, like, it's that feeling. I always, always remember, like, 25 was this magic age to me, right? Um, that by 25, I was going to, you know, have my degrees and I was going to have a, like, do this. Not so much. It was, like, one of the things. Like, by 25, I was going to be ready for life, meaning family and all that stuff. I didn't know how it was going to come, but I'm like, by 25, it's going down. <laughs> 25 came and went, I was like, oh, hell no. <laughs> um, I was still a mess. Like, I got my degrees, but then it was like, mm-mm. You -mm. yeah, both of your degrees by 25? <laughs> yeah. You go ahead, girl. Yeah, yeah. I have. I literally finished um, the summer before I turned 26. Yeah, I was going yeah. back to school to finish my degree when I was 25 years old. Yeah. So you go ahead. <laughs> um, And that's the thing, like, and then, like, coming from the, the, the family that I come from <laughs> and the background that I share, they literally expected that the minute you would finish your degree, mm -hmm. oh, so when, when, when are you getting married? When's the family? And you're, like, thinking, I'm a hot mess. What? Who? You know? Is that a cultural thing, you think? Is that, like... Yeah. I would... Yeah. For sure. I, I definitely felt like it was um, a cultural thing because they they make you feel super old by that age. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean. So um, even if your your internal clock is not ticking, they they make you feel like it should be, and like and so then you get feverish, you know. Mm -hmm. Um. And and if you're already in a relationship, then you kind of start pumping the gas mm -hmm. when that should not be the case at all, right? Because you literally were in that relationship because it was comfortable. Right? <laughs> because it was convenient, and 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 I can def I'm I'm definitely guilty of that. Not to say that there weren't true feelings there, right? But they're all. I think that those relationships were entertained longer than necessary mm -hmm. because of certain factors. And I know for sure I did that in my twenties, um, because I didn't know what the hell I wanted. So mm -hmm. it was like I don't know what I want. So this probably is it right and so you keep going with something even though internally it didn't feel right mm. and I think that's the huge difference for me um being 20 in my 20s than now being in my 30s dating mm -hmm. that's that's the yeah the biggest thing I think for sure um so I know you also talked about the fact that you know being in your 30s you know what you want and I mentioned that too so um do you really feel you actually know what you're looking for? Because, you know, it's a, it's a cute sound bite. And I know people say that a lot. And in dating, I realize people say it. And then when you ask them, they don't know what the hell they're talking about. Or when they feel they start to get these things, mm -hmm. 
didn't act completely different, right? So I think that's a two answer kind of question. Okay. So the first thing I'll say is yes. I do think I I do think with air quotes, um, <laughs> think because I'm not sure if I'm thinking, but I'm also <laughs> putting that air quotes on want. I do think I know what I want. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> for the most part, I know what's good for me. I know what's not gonna work for me. So uh, those are the things that I want. Of course, I want the things that's gonna work for me. I know there's a certain way I have to do things. I have a certain way I have to communicate. So the person who I'm involved with has to be patient. I know, um, like I'm very affectionate. So the person I'm involved with has to be reflective of that. Has to be just as affectionate or willing to re- receive that affection. Um. So yes, there's things I I want. I know. I want to date somebody who's African descent, um, anywhere along the diaspora. So yes, there's those things that I know I want. Um, thing about wants is that things you oh, you can want something and it's not always good for you or it can be too good for mm. you. You know, just being practical about that kind of stuff. Um, but then you don't know what you want because I, I it's been times I'm like I know I I want this, and that's like the packaging just looks amazing. And then you you open it up on Christmas Day and you're like, what the fuck is this? This is not what I asked for. Um, So, of course, you know, there's those things you got to be wary about. So, yeah, for the most part, I think I know what I want. Um, I I think I have my expectations and um, wishes and requirements that the person that I'm involved with uh, hopefully would fulfill. But I'm also aware that... um, it's very easy to uh, make a diaper look good, um, wrap it up, and get, put it in as a gift. So uh, there's, there's definitely things I'm wary of, and I understand that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, what about yourself? Do you feel like you know what you want? I do. I do feel I know what I want. Um and that's like characteristics and traits and all of those mm. things that you've mentioned. And um, also adding the piece of, I know what I'm aiming for, right? Like what the goal is as well, mm-hmm. which I think is important because that's a piece that I wasn't, I honestly wasn't sure about prior. Um, so yeah, for sure. Um, now it's like kind of, I mean, I agree with you in some points it's like, Knowing what you want and maybe, again, the packaging might seem awesome, right? And then going, ooh, <laughs> like, yeah. this is not exactly what I thought it was going to be. Um, but I think, for me, I think what I'm struggling with right now is dating is, I think we all kind of come into dating with this mindset of who who we think we are and who we used to be mm. right and I, I in my experience of dating i've noticed this a lot like people talk a lot about oh i'm this type of person i this is what i used to do with this my exes or in the past and da 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 but they come into it I think in a way, like, it may make sense, right? Like, you can only draw from your past, right, Um, experiences. And if you've been consistent in that, then you feel, you literally feel that's who you are. I think there's a piece piece that's kind of missing and also the piece that I think is bringing me some, it's making me slow down, causing me to slow down even more, is that with every person you encounter, you will change, right? Mm -hmm. You, You will engage with them differently. And though there are aspects of you that might remain consistent, the degree might be different with that individual, mm-hmm. right? The intensity might be different with that individual. Um, and so, what I'm what I'm noticing about myself in dating um, is that I'm concerned, uh, not concerned, yeah, I'm concerned, whatever, with who I I know who I I know who I was right and I have an idea of who I think I am it's I don't know who I'm going to be with whoever I decide to settle down with Mm -hmm. 
right? And that and that's the piece. So like, I don't know. So I, I say all that to say I don't know that once, let's say, I find this person, we get involved. If the things I want now might change because of it. Mm-hmm. Things you want now? Yeah. Like I said, I know what I want, right? Mm-hmm. But that's in me being single, right? That's mm-hmm. me feeding from the experiences from my past. So then you get what you want and you'll be like, I don't want this at all. Correct. Right? Or maybe want it in a different way. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's kind of where my head's been in regards to that. Like, I know what I want. And then sometimes you get a little taste of it and you're like, oh, oh. <laughs> you know, like, hmm, let me rethink this. Um, yeah, that's, yeah, that's kind of where my head's been with that. Mm-hmm. Um because I think I've been experiencing that a little bit recently, too. Interesting. Yeah. Huh. I mean... I don't... Sh- for the most part, I haven't... Uh, lived that kind of experience. Uh, from my most recent dating experience... Um, I think... The packaging is great. I think I'm enjoying the gifts. Um, Though it's early, I can feel the hesitation from that person. Um, and I, But I, I don't necessarily deem that as a, a means of me to be a, not necessarily a concern. It's, it's more so at the moment are for me, it's something you have to deal with until that was part of the process of dating. I think this uh, we it's very easy for us to minimalize the process of dating. It's mm-hmm. not this thing where it's just like, I could go on a couple of dates, I fall in love yeah. with this person. It's not cookie cutter. It's, 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 yeah. it's no way possible. It can be. Um, but I also think that we apply these rules. Yes, it's not cookie cutter, but we also think that these are the rules of engagement. And um, I don't think there should be rules. Um, I don't believe relationships should have guidelines to how a relationship is supposed to be built. Mm. Um, I think it's, it's sometimes we get what we want and it's not that it's not what we want. Sometimes it's, it's we got what we want but we got it in the method we needed or sometimes we didn't get it in the method we needed and there's so many things that's tangibles and, or that you weren't ready for it. Or you wasn't want. ready. Yeah, yeah. There's, yeah, there's so many tangibles that it makes it difficult yeah. to have this kind of uh, dating experience. Um, so I get you. I get you. I, I just personally haven't had that experience yet myself. Um, I'm more of a dealer. So, um... When you say dealer, what does that mean? I sell crack, guys. Um, no. He, he does not <laughs> sell crack. <laughs> um, no, as a dealer, I'm a... a I, I evaluate what's worth dealing with and what's not mm. dealing with immediately. And if it's not worth dealing with immediately, I let it go. I see. Um, and so, I, I for me, if I feel like restraint or any other um, emotion that's being given to me from somebody I'm involved with, is I'm more of a... I deal with it until it's the time to talk about it. Mm. Um, and then we go from there. Um, okay. You mentioned you don't feel there's a timing to things. You don't feel like everything should be structured technically, right? I mean, I think that what I'm saying is I'm not saying relationships shouldn't be structured. I'm not I, I'm not one to say like, oh, you, you, you don't need a title. I believe titles and things like that are important. Or, or I, I'm not saying like you can have like a want to be romantically tied with one person but sleeping with Tom, Dick, Harry, Sue, and Joe mm. at the same time. I think that in that case, yes, there needs to be some structures. But I'm talking about the, when I say the, when I'm questioning structure, I mean, it doesn't have to be the conventional way our parents did it in the 60s mm. or in the 50s, 40s, however old you are, your parents, it doesn't have to be that way anymore. And it doesn't have to be biblical and it doesn't have to be this new wave of dating where it's, everything is super open and, mm. um, we don't have to be in the confines of the times mm. um, in regards to, to dating. So you do believe in timing of things? or you don't, When like, I said times, I meant like generations. No, that generations. piece I yeah. got. But what I'm saying is in regards to interactions in dating, right? Right? Do you have timing for 
this sounds so old school, but for the, for, you know, f- kissing, having sex. No, I don't um, believe in timings for that. At, you know, at a all. number of the timing for a number of days before meeting family or just just in general, the, all the things because you you know you say you know what you want, um, and so do, yeah, do you have this timeline or even? So I mean, everybody, I think everybody has a timeline of how they want things to go, right? I want to be married by this time. I want to. Yes, people generally tend to have those timelines, and that that's not a good or bad thing in my opinion. It's just it is what it is. But when I, when I say time in regards to time, like um. I'm one that believe people could fall in love at, at first sight. I'm one that believe that uh, somebody can know they want to marry somebody within two months. And that doesn't mean that they know every bit of that person. You don't have to know every bit of that person to know that you are capable of marrying somebody. Um, or that particular person. So, I, I guess conventional dating techniques, I don't necessarily agree with. I don't believe that you somebody is... Uh, uh, I believe that you could have sex with somebody the first date and then later on marry, like, and end up having a full-blown, great, amazing relationship afterwards with kisses or hold hands or first time somebody meets your parents. The person that um, I'm involved with now accidentally met my parents maybe like two weeks into the situation. Oh, damn. Um, and I wasn't bothered by it at all. And it, it just happened that way. And it, I would have freaked the hell out. Yeah, I, uh, she did freak out. She hid in the bathroom like 10, 15 minutes. Um, but yes, I do imagine that I could see how people would uh, put timers on that. But I don't necessarily subscribe to those. I don't think subscribing to them helps or hmm. or uh, devalues the potential of a relationship. So there's no f- too fast for you? I don't say, I don't, not that there's not a too fast. I mean, there can be situations where you can't be too fast, but it also depends on that person. Mm. I've been, I had. I guess I have to agree with that too, yeah. Yeah, I've been in situations where I've been like, I've always went to with somebody in two months, and they were like, "I want to live with you." And I'm just like, "Yo, bro, you gotta slow this down. Like, <laughs> like this is not how this works, homegirl." Mm-hmm. And then I've been in situations where I've been with people for two months, and I'm like head over heels with this person. Mm. Um, so, um, people. Chemistry is an interesting thing. Mm-hmm. Um, chemistry is a real interesting thing. Things go work well now and don't work later, and things go not work well now and and then tomorrow will be perfect. Um, so I I cannot say that. Uh, mm. Yeah, I, I can't answer that. It, it all depends on the person. I, I get. I definitely can agree with that. Depends on that person. Um, and when I say that, I mean like chemistry is definitely important, but so does. So is connection, mm-hmm. and I think I think they're different. I think chemistry and connection are two different things, um, and but both of them are for me very important, and it does dis- determine the pace mm-hmm. um, as well. I think yeah, I, I agree with you on uh, of quite a few things. I, I I think it's important to definitely listen to spirit, gut, whatever people want to call it. Mm-hmm. Definitely listen to that to that and if you feel connected enough you feel the chemistry is there and you want to do things in a few months rather than years go for it like you want to fall in love go for it like go for it as long as as it's genuine Mm -hmm. um and not because you feel this is what the other person wants you to do agreed not because you feel you have to do this because of whatever external reasons but if it's true to you i say definitely definitely go for it um for sure for sure so i mean hearing you speak you seem very confident you seem sure right i'm a person that is like riddled with fears when it comes to like committing into relationships right um and it's not because i can't be in relationships not because i can't commit but i have a fear of of course i think many people can kind of I guess agrees is like fear, there's the fear of committing to the wrong person, right? Mm-hmm. And like the idea of time wasted, even though I know that time is never wasted, you you learn and you gain, you know, different things. <coughs> However, um, I do without going into so much more detail. Of course, if, you know, we want to definitely unpack that, but um, 
I do have fears. You seem confident. Like, do you have fears when it comes to dating? And, like, how does that influence your decision making? Yes, um, I do have tons and tons of fears. Um, but I've been in situations in relationships that's taught me that you can have fears and concerns, but um, you cannot base yeah you can't base your relationship off of those fears and concerns. At least you have to try your hardest not to. Um, but that also means that um, to not live in fear because of those fears and relation uh, those like fear is an interesting thing because we all have them Mm -hmm. um but there's times where um i'm victim to it as well where i have a fear and i'm just like i can't do this because i'm afraid um but i specifically romantically i think with the romantics like we we cripple ourselves with that fear and um you miss out of a lot um Guess what? We're humans and we're going to make bad mistakes or bad decisions sometimes. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's not even a bad decision. Maybe it was a good decision. Things just change. Um, but the, for me, the concept of wasting time, even though, yes, there's such a thing as wasted time, I don't think there's a possible to waste time in a relationship. Um, because how else are you going to figure out what you want? If you're not willing to put yourself out there to be vulnerable and be in a relationship, how else can you determine this is the what I said I wanted, I really don't want. Mm-hmm. Or what I said I wanted, I want it this way, actually. Um, you can't do that if you're sitting at home playing solitaire with your 10 cats. And you're, <laughs> you know, you're, 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 it, it just is impossible to do that. Sitting there wishing that the perfect man would just fall from the sky. You got to mm-hmm. go out there and then participate. You got to be active in dating. You have to be right. be willing to get in a relationship and... You know, fall in that and pick yourself back up in that and fall again until that doesn't work. Yeah. You have to be vulnerable. If you're not willing to be vulnerable, it's almost like, then what are you doing in a relationship? Uh, vulnerability is a hard thing, I think. And it's not only with intimate relationships. I think we experience vulnerability in different aspects of our lives. Mm-hmm. And I think across the board, it's hard. You know, mm-hmm. it's very difficult to do. Um, and it's definitely something that needs to be tackled um, internally, like with yourselves, and I think a lot of us sometimes don't not even have to be vulnerable with ourselves. Mm-hmm. So it, of course, it's going to be extremely difficult to be that with anyone else, right? Um, but I agree. Like, yeah, fear shouldn't cripple you. Mm-hmm. Um, I do think there's a level of guidance that it does provide, and it should provide, but it shouldn't cripple you. Um, I guess that's what I'm tackling with to uh, not allowing it to cripple. Um, and take away from the experience, right? Not the stew joy that you might experience um, because of fear. So, so when, okay, so when, I guess, let's say, engaging um, with someone new, because um, this is a conversation I've had with my um, other guest host, Love Shelly, um, talking about when is the t- best time to reveal what your intentions are to the person that you're speaking to or talking mm-hmm. to, dating. I know people use different terminologies. But s- someone that y- you are getting to know and might be interested in. Mm-hmm. So from your perspective, um, when is a good time to reveal that intention? So I'm going to give you what my perspective is and then what Love Shelley's was. For me, I think you need to do that from jump, right? And it's not to say... Oh, this is what I want. You better be with it, right? But it's to say, hey, this is where I'm at so that you know, right? Mm -hmm. If you aren't on that same page, wonderful. Let's talk about it now and then we can decide. Mm -hmm. Do we still want to get to know each other or not? Whereas Love Shelley felt that you needed to get to know the person more before Telling mm-hmm. them your intentions. And to me, I felt like that was a little bit misleading in a mm-hmm. way. And I also thought that that, that to me sounded like a waste of time. Like, mm-hmm. it, because you really can invest so much time and then come to find out you trying to get married and the other person was out here yeah. thinking y'all were friends. Like, like, you know, just something, to me, I think you can get really lost if you don't not clear. And for me, saying what your intention is doesn't mean I'm going to have, have it or want it with you. 
But to let you know, this is where my mind is, Mm -hmm. if that makes any sense. So what is your point of view? So I, I, I think I'm more along the lines of your ways of thinking. Um, and I say that I think there's more to intentions than just this is what I see myself doing in the future. Can you get down with it? I think intentions is knowing the things about yourself that most people won't like. Mm. Um, for example, I, I, I'm not a Christian and whatever my religious beliefs are or my religious beliefs and I, it's important to me to express that um, to women early on in the process because I'm Last thing I want is for somebody to say, you know, like, 10 months later, like, you know, what, what do we want to do about kids if, you know, they feel about baptism or whatever. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not a Christian. That's when the waste of time comes, really. Mm-hmm. And it's not, it's, for me, it's, it's not so much more about the objectives of dating, even though, yes, that's important. Like, yeah, you need to know, like, I'm dating to get married. Mm-hmm. I'm dating to just have fun or I'm dating for convenience. That's important. Um, but just as important as there's things. other lifestyle things you think exactly is oh, yeah okay um and and that's just as important because everything could be perfect mm-hmm. um as far as intent goes but when your lifestyles don't match or yeah, you know I agree it it, it it could take away and um from the the experience and waste time as well so um I'm with you and I just would like to add that it's, yeah yeah I didn't. I wasn't even thinking about the lifestyle piece, but I think that is a very essential piece, right? Yeah, talking about religion or talking about um, general goals, that will would affect a partner, mm-hmm. right? So, um, i.e. like, oh, I plan on becoming a business owner or I plan on... Um, Picking up and moving to California. Right, exactly. I plan yeah. on moving, right, not raising kids in New York. So then that tells the person, hey, you know, like, if we do get involved, you have to be comfortable with the idea that we are going to leave New York State, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, that is, that's that's true. I, I, I don't think I thought about it like, like, like that, but yeah, yeah, that's absolutely true. Of, And then it, and it does mean that you need to have an idea of, for sure of who you are and what you want Mm -hmm. and in some ways having a plan in in essence too um because you have to share that plan and Mm -hmm. um yeah um yeah yeah that's true i didn't think about it like that yeah i mean from my experience i think the last like most serious relationship i had with somebody um i think i knew what i wanted uh um, I, at least I thought I did, but more so I once I realized that the communi- not the community that we didn't really communicate about uh, our lifestyles. I think that was mm. a big, mm. a big uh, separator. Um, yeah, you know she wanted to date a Christian man. I mean she was very clear on like oh whatever, you know, and I was lost in my beliefs and like my theological beliefs. So you know I, I could try to do something that. You know, I tried it. It wasn't something I was into, and that was a big deal for me that I wasn't in. This is not what I want. I did not want to grow up and not grow up or raise children in a, you know, a, a home that was required to go to church every Sunday and every Tuesday and every Saturday morning to gospel mm. choir, pra, uh, uh, choir practice, whatever the case may be. It's not something I was just generally interested in doing, and um, um, I think that's when it became important to me that uh. Once again, the lifestyles have to match and correlate. And if it's not, it doesn't have to be 100%. Um, because plans change. You you could, like, your plan could be, oh, I, I want to move to California with the next person I'm with. And then you're like, you know what? No, I, I think I, I'm I'm set with staying here in New York or mm-hmm. whatever it case may be. So that, things like that could change. So I'm not expecting a 100% match lifestyle-wise. Um, but... Yeah, definitely. I want to emphasize that to you, the guys who are listening. Um, if she's not matching your lifestyle close enough to help magnify or fulfill your your dreams and your goals, then you know that's something you need to take a look at. Mm-hmm. And so, I <laughs> last year in dating someone just just because what you just said sparked something. So last year in dating someone, uh, very interesting experience. Um, but I definitely think for when I was dating him, which was like literally 
he was the first person I dated outside of my breakup. Um, it was, I was happy I had the experience when I did because it did shine light for the rest of the experiences for me. Mm -hmm. It made it clearer, I guess, to, to, to how to navigate the rest of the experiences for the year. Um, um, he, he stated, and again, I'm probably going to butcher the exact statements, however, and I think I'm also going to soften them, them a little bit. Um, he stated that he, where he feels that women kind of go wrong now, listen, y'all bear with me. Okay. This is not my own thoughts, <laughs> but he feel he felt where women went wrong was that they met, they would meet a man and the man would make clear to her what his plan was and not having a plan is a plan. Right. Um, and instead of her seeing um, and agreeing to his plan, a lot of times women will hear the plan, understanding the plan or lack thereof and pretty much hop on the bus. Right. And then midway, try to change the mm -hmm. direction. And he felt like that's where a lot of strife and unnecessary things happen because it'll be X amount of time later um, and then she's trying to steer the bus a different route and then she gets resistance or, and then issues start arising. Now, at first I, I had a very volatile reaction and I was like, wait a minute. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. I was like, excuse you. <laughs> like, um, but in a kind of conversation, um, and really breaking it down with him and then going home and then thinking about it myself, I really thought about it and I said, you know what? That actually makes a lot of freaking sense. It does. It made a lot of freaking sense. And hearing you say that, and even prior to you having conversations with my homeboy and just other people, I realized that that is a very real thing. Mm. Super real thing. And then I also look back on my past relationships and kind of how I went about them. I'm like, wow. Like, I, I yeah, I did that. Mm -hmm. You know, I it was clear this person had this plan or had no freaking plan. And I still was like, and he was okay that's with that okay. plan. Exactly. I was like, that's okay. And then midway, I'm like, nah, we need to go right. When he was like, nah, I'm okay with going straight. Right? Mm -hmm. Nah, I want to go, I want to go left. Or I want to go whatever. And I was like, no, 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 let's turn it this way. And then they might take the turn once or twice. Mm -hmm. But then they're going to get back mm -hmm. on the road on that, that they that wanted. Issue, yeah. Exactly. And I think that's essential. And it's not to say that you don't have your own plan, right? But you should find the one whose plan matches more closely with yours. Mm -hmm. Not just jump on ones that's completely different. Yeah. And that's the piece that at first I was like, wait a minute, da, 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 that I was kind of, but then when I thought about it, I was like, oh, and then when we talked about it, I was like, oh, okay. Like, I get you. So finding that person whose plan is as closely related to yours as possible, right? Mm -hmm. Um as opposed to completely rerouting <laughs> Indeed, someone yeah. else's plan, right? To fit yours. Um, which I thought was super, super impactful. I thought that was powerful. I honestly like that. I thought about that and I, I clearly, I still, still in my brain. So, <laughs> um, it was very, very impactful for sure. So I, to kind of, I guess to kind of, uh, close out the conversation for you what are your hard limits like what is something in dating if you encounter you're like hell no um uh, that's my personal is it, is it like what are you talking about trait wise is, is i mean you can person? answer how you want to like um one the other all the above like Um, I have a very short threshold for uh, many of my uh, peeves or dislikes and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a bit hard for me to say, like, oh, this is my hell no moment. Um, I know during the talking phase, if you have, like, I have no kids. Um, and it's important to me. Uh, I'm, I'm not realizing like, I cannot date somebody with children. Mm, I agree um, with that one. As much as I wanted to try, I try. Uh, it's, it's just not. Mm -hmm. It's not for everyone. Mm -hmm. Um. So that's one of my hell knows. Um. And that's nothing to say anything for you against you women. That's that's at all. Like, children. That's just, God bless all y'all with kids. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? 
It's just not for me. Indeed. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, cultural things is, is important for me. Um, so I have to be somewhere along this African diaspora. If not, that's a a super hard hell no for me. Hmm. Um, and personality wise, I I don't do well with uh aggressive anger. Mm. Um a, a lot of black men don't. Um and and you know, is I think one of the things we do is that we just shut down or we become aggressive back and it, it's not the the most healthiest. If you know you have a short threshold for aggressiveness and how people speak, you know, men beyond that. Understand that you have a short threshold and the people you're probably dating, if you are having these problems, it's probably not the type of person you should be dating. But for me, I know I cannot be with somebody who is too aggressive when they're upset or, you know, the point of finger all the time when they're upset. I, I, I personally can't do that. Um, I, I know the direction it leads my line of thinking, and it's just not beneficial um, for me. Um, so that's a hard, you know... That the finger snapping and shit is cool. Like you know, we all have our, our ways of communicating, whatever the case may be. But when it becomes aggressive in nature and it's not resulting in a healthy uh, discussion, then so you don't like the neck rolling. You don't like all that. All the, <laughs> oh, the, oh my gosh! If you saw the girl that I talk to now, <laughs> all that neck rolling and snapping, I'm like yo, like, jokingly sometimes I just be like yo, like who you talking to? Hmm. <laughs> um, when it's joking time, but when it's argument time, I'll be like, "Man, let me shut up," because. But um, I mean, it's it's. it's so it's, you're dealing with it though, even though it's your hard limit. It's it's different because she does it, um, but she does I, she's not aggressive. I don't feel like she's trying to violate in any way that makes me feel like, mm. like, I, it, because I have a low threshold for it. I I question it sometimes, but then you know, you know, she puts it back in perspective. Please don't confuse my um my uh passion for anger or you know so she does a pretty decent job um hearing those sound sounds I'd be like yeah I, but, um <laughs> I think for the most part she does that and and that is so yes I have a, a very small threshold for it but I think she she knows where the toes align um so hmm. she's a keeper there from that part but um yeah that like I deal with the neck wound and all that but that aggressiveness. It's never okay. Uh, same thing with women. If he's too aggressive with you or communicating, you got to go. <laughs> um, don't sit there and deal with that. Dip out. You know, if you know you have a low threshold for that. Um, and for the most part, I'm pretty, like, interested in, like, yeah. You know, I don't want to put out the image that I'm all over the place. But um, I, 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 I generally do not. Um, I'm not a, a hell no kind of person. Often I give people the opportunity to. To um to hang themselves if that makes sense. <laughs> so you know we you all have enough rope. So yeah, I, no, yeah, I give you the rope on date one, and I even point you to the tree. It all depends on how far you want to throw this rope, mm. um, or if you want somebody to kick down a chair for you. It's, just, it's pretty much, mm. um, and I, I say that to say like yes, I, I I'm not the type that's gonna hold everything against you. Those are just more so those couple of things I mentioned. Mm. Are my yours? Um. So the kids thing is a no for me. I've been there, done that. I've got the postcard and a souvenir. No, thank you. Um, and again, kudos to y'all single parents out there. I Just the level of attention I think I need and energy I need, I don't think that single parents can provide for me. Mm -hmm. And that's just me being selfish, and I think I'm okay. it's okay to be selfish. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, especially when you're trying to get to know someone who you want to share your life with. Mm -hmm. That's just how I feel. Um, and there's just a level of complication that comes with those type of situations that I just personally cannot deal with any longer. Mm -hmm, yeah. um, but not to say that they're not wonderful people, you know, mm -hmm. not saying that at all. Um, I would say that I would say hard limit, hard limit. No, no, no for me. Um, I can't, I can't see myself. Yeah, I can't see myself being with or entertaining someone who doesn't have a plan, mm -hmm. right? Regardless if it's something that is still changing, it's mm -hmm. there still needs to be something there, mm -hmm. right? Um, and that's just, you know, it could be, I want to own a business, but they don't know what business is. Okay, 
I, I'd rather that than be like, I don't know. Mm, mm-hmm. I'm just, we too old. I'm sorry. Like, mm-hmm. but I'm not sorry. <laughs> I, I can't. But, that's just going to make me uneasy. And I'm a person, um, I like stability. <laughs> I, I want to feel stable. And that's not going to make me feel stable. Mm-hmm. Um, someone who isn't family oriented, I can't do with, right? And everyone's families are different. And um, it's not even to say you have to have great relationship with your family. That's not what I'm saying. However, you still understand the importance mm-hmm. of family. Like, you still want to, even if you didn't get that uh, kind of experience, you want to create mm-hmm. that experience of connection and, and, and cohesion. I think that's important for me. So super, super important. Because I think it says a lot. Mm-hmm. If someone doesn't want that and they don't care for it, mm-hmm. for me, um, ooh, what else? Can I touch back on what you mentioned about goals and yeah? Um, is there a difference between like goals and dreams? I think sometimes yes. Okay, it brings me back to somebody who uh, I courted for a couple of months when I lived in Virginia. Um, sweet girl, sweet girl. Um. I just sometimes it just felt like she had no ambition, mm. and it was depressing. And when you push that kind of issue with people, um, you know, it, it becomes a, a, a very volatile situation mm. when Absolutely. you have ambition and this person's like, "Oh, well, I'll, I'll be there to join your ride." Yeah, yeah. Um, ride the so coattails. Yeah. I say I say that it's not my hard no, because some people just don't know. They know they have it, but they don't know where. Where it needs to be directed at. I think some people want to do better with themselves, but they just don't know mm. um, their talents are, or their 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 concerns, or their their uh, interests are. Um, and it takes sometimes it takes people longer times to figure that out. Um, I'm more so concerned with our uh, immediately is are you con- are you content with what you have now? Mm. And if you are, it then we can we have somewhere to start from, and then. Mm-hmm. You know, later on, hopefully, ideally, you'll figure out where your passions are. Mm-hmm. It took, it took people, like, I know for I, my mom, like, it took some time to really realize, like, this is exactly what I want to do. Um, and she's been working towards that goal for a very long time. Um, cool to just, she, she just, I don't think she just verbally was able to just say, this is what it mm-hmm. is. She just was working towards it. Mm-hmm. And it just started to happen. But some people just don't know how to communicate that, and that, and they're and, not willing to do the work either. Or, so. or that, or yeah. So that's why it was hard for me or, to put that as a whole. And they talk about it till they blew in the face, and they do absolutely nothing towards it. Indeed, that too as well. Yeah. So a plan. I think a dream, dreams and goals are different in that sense. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Dreams are just that they they're stuck in your head. Mm-hmm. I think goals are dreams that are written down. It has a step by step process. Mm-hmm. That's what I think it is, right? Dreams to me. It, don't mean nothing. I'm sorry. Like that's just how I feel. Mm-hmm. If you want a dream to become real, you need it needs to become a goal. Mm-hmm. That's just how I feel about it. Um, but yeah. Um, I don't know. I felt like I had another hard limit. Well, I'm sorry. Uh, okay. No, that's fine. I just feel like maybe I lost my train of thought. <laughs> um. Oh, I think I did lose my train of thought. Oh, another hard limit. It was important too. It was a good one. <laughs> well, it was a good one. It was a good one. I bet it was. Ooh. Crap. Uh, oh, ooh, here it goes. A hard limit for me in dating is I can't, I can't entertain someone who doesn't understand the concept of courting. Mm-hmm. Like I can't do it. You know, like I've been there, done that in my twenties, right? Like I, I feel like there's a level of it shows a level of interest mm-hmm. um, with somebody who is aware of and understanding, and they get. They get it, right? Mm-hmm. Where I feel I've realized that a lot of men, even older men, because I dated older men, they have no idea what courting is. And mm-hmm. they literally like, oh, I like you. You like me. We're together. Let's now we're together. together. And they're, and they... That's it. And that's, exactly. And that's it. There's no... I'm not going to keep it interested in no anything. That's it. We like each other. That's it. That's enough. No. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's not enough. Um... We need to experience things and get to know each other in different ways. Um, I think that's important for me. That's essential for me. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And, yeah. So, 
that's a hard limit for me where before I was unsure of it I was I, I was like eh, you know it's fine again because I was like that cool girl like oh mm-hmm. in my 20s especially like we could just chill like it's yeah. whatever <laughs> and and what I realized that created a very comfortable situation very early mm-hmm. and it got boring very early um but also they just it, it also made the relationship feel that a lot longer Mm-hmm. If that makes sense, then it actually was three months become three years by accident. Yeah, like it just shit. yeah. So it creates yeah. It just yeah. I, I learned from that mistake. Mm-hmm. Um, but not only was I felt like that piece of it, but I just think it does. You do learn more about an individual when you actually court them. You know, taking that time to actually get to know them. Indeed. And I don't think it's a one-way street either. I know a lot of people hear that and they think, oh, just the guy's going to be taking their girls on dates. No, 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 no. It's a two-way street. Experience I don't think it's stuff. one way. Right. Get I think sick it's a and then go street. to the hospital with somebody or run into them on a train by accident. And just experience life together in ways that you don't normally Instead of being cooed up in the house. Yeah, exactly. Watching TV, watching Netflix. Or, you know, take a walk to the park. Ain't Do that just much Netflix other anyways. Child, listen. Okay? You know what I'm saying? Um, And it just also shows that person's love of interest, their creativity. Yeah. And things like that. You know what I mean? Um, And, it, you, and you also can include people in their interests. Um, So, do you have a dating style? Dating style? Yeah. Um. I can elaborate more if you need. Please do. <laughs> um, by dating style, I mean it in, rather it incorporates one kind of how, of course, you go about dating, right? Mm-hmm. But also when while you okay. Yeah, is there yeah do you have a quote unquote I don't know if this sounds so sterile but like a protocol to dating right how you go about it um, but also things that while you're dating someone needs to be established or understood or if that makes any sense um you mean to like in regards to actually going on dates or do you just mean in general like I'm dating this person um you're dating a person um, more so than like you, you're at a point where like okay yeah I think I'm I'm interested in getting to know this individual. I don't think I necessarily have a dating style. Um, I think I'm evenly enough mild mannered and eclectic to uh I guess uh be okay with a little bit of. Chaos. Hmm. Um, uh, uh, maybe chaos is not the word, but uh, I guess um, this organization. Hmm. Um, I don't believe dating should be so organized. Hmm. Um, and I guess we're saying that I have style would mean that um, I, I feel like there's this particular way things have to be done. Um, hmm. And I don't think it, like I mentioned earlier in the pod, um, I don't think there's one way to do it all. So I. I think it would be a a bit much for me to say, like, yeah, I do have a style or techniques that I believe that. Um, now, there's certain things I know, like, I can only handle certain things a certain way. Okay, like, so things, I like, think I that's know, probably like, more what, so the angle I was going. So, yeah. so, like, I know there's a certain way how I have to have a discussion. Mm-hmm. And I'm not expecting somebody to, to, to deal with a discussion the same way I do. But I'm asking them to understand that the method that I use it to communicate is important for me to communicate that way. Um, to maintain a healthy relationship, of course. Um, and things like that, then yes. Um, There's a certain way how I like to introduce people to my family, mm. ideally. Um, if I decide I want to introduce that person to my family. But in regards to... Um, but I, I'm okay with... like. That not happening that way sometimes. Or, you know, I, I think I'll be uh, lying to myself that I believe that there's one way to do it. So I can't s- submit to just one method. Um, I, I just know the things that I, I kind of do prefer and how I don't. Okay. So, I guess... And I barely know that. I mean, 
not that I really know. I know the things that I prefer, but it doesn't really matter to me enough to say, like, it has to be this way or the highway, if that makes more sense. Okay, so in in dating, let's give me, let me give you a scenario. You find someone you're interested in, and you guys haven't established that you're mutual, like, you're, um, what is the word? Exclusively dating each other. Mm-hmm. Um... And let's say you have an idea that person might be dating other people. Mm-hmm. Are you when I'm at like I guess what I was asking style it's like yeah you did answer this part of it but do you have are you that type of person to just be like I need to let this person know that if I'm dating you and I'm I want to be exclusive or if I'm so, centered on you this person needs to be centered on me yes because or, I, yes because I I establish my intents really really early mm. um so if I don't intend on dating you seriously I'm going to tell you very very early that I am not going to take this seriously and in fact I probably won't even want commitment and I'll let you know that by date one date two this is what I see for me and you mm-hmm. um so in that regards yes I guess my st- my style would be like I'm very blunt. Um, and, uh, I, I, I'm very honest with my intentions and, and people know what I want, um, from that perspective. So I, w- I wouldn't, that scenario wouldn't necessarily bother me because if I, we probably established that early on that we aren't going to be committed to each other in that way. At least I try my hardest to, to, to establish that. Okay. Have you felt it? That style has been helpful in your experience? Yes and no. I think. More so, with my more previous ones than the one I am in now. Um, I think the dynamics of that situation is just, is growing, and that's not to put it in a bad or that's not to shed it in a, a, a positive light or a bad light. It's just to say the dynamics is growing, which you know can um, did that, which can um, change your method of. Viewing things in mm-hmm. some ways, um, so it, it you know, I, I, my intentions was told very early on, and she, her intentions were told very early on, um. But as a relationship goes, you see that we we're just holding true to our intentions, but the methods I think we've originally kind of said this is the people we're going to be kind of <laughs> mm-hmm. altered in some ways. Um, so I, I say that in, to say like. My previous ones, yes, because you know, it's, I didn't see you this way, anyways. So there was no need to move forward. But now, once you start seeing that interest in you, like, all right, this is the person I'm presenting mm-hmm. myself to be. And then now you're like, you're past the the person that you're presenting, and now it's starting to get the person that you actually are, mm-hmm. and not the person that you're presenting. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I, that's why, I, like, it, I would say not so much now because we're past that stage. We're early on. I, I've never, I, we never had the opportunity to get into these stages I for the see. last like three or four years. I see, I see. I would say for me, um, that similar to you again, intentions early on, I'll tell yeah. you, but I think the difference between that, I'm going to tell you what my intentions is as an individual, right? With a person that I want to be with, but I'm not necessarily saying that this is going to be with you again, mm-hmm. like I mentioned and but how I do move within the dynamic would be determined on if I do like you, right? Um, so I'll make my intentions clear and just be like, oh, I'm looking to attain this, right? Um, and depending on how we engage, depending on how we connect, um, I would still keep, of course, communication is key. Like keeping that open and keeping it understood. Like, okay, we're dating. I understand you will be dating. I will be dating. Um, but until like we have, until like a conversation is had, is going to be understood that we're dating other people. Mm-hmm. Um, right. And it kind of has to be made clear mm-hmm. that I want, or you want to exclusively date. Um, so I guess my style in essence is being clear, being, making sure that things understood. Um, however, also being open if that makes any sense Mm -hmm. um but i do agree with you said like um my openness has to ties into the fact that while we're doing this getting to know each other and other people you might realize that these other people are crap and i don't want to exert that energy there anymore Mm -hmm. and so 
um, being open to um, having that dialogue, being open to, you know what, I did say this and like, I'm realizing that maybe that um, these were, these are my intentions still and I did say, oh, maybe I said it in a very vague, general way, but then I start to reiterate my intentions more, more specifically, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, it was interesting. The, pop, the question just popped in my head, and I just figured out I'll ask you. Because um, <laughs> some people, I think some people um, have these styles, and they don't share it. Mm -hmm. And then um, they get to know someone, and they assume, or start to get to know someone, and they assume that other people think, like, they, they're, they're going about the dating process the same. Mm -hmm. And I think that causes a lot of confusion. Um, and so I was just interested to hear what you had to say about that. So, last episode, I kind of altered a little bit um, one of the segments. So, the what's happening, what's going on um, segment, I kind of added to it the piece of what's your intentions for the week or what you're looking forward to. And so, I want to ask you, so what what's your intentions for the upcoming week or weeks? Or what is something that you are looking forward to and putting energy towards? I think um, the approach I'm going to take for the next week, maybe two, is a more of a healing approach. Um, mm -hmm. Getting my body right. Right. Or at least attempting to. Um, getting my mental right right now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I, yeah, making sure I'm in a healthy uh headspace, making sure my body is follow suit and is in a, a very similar headspace. Um, taking the time to just enjoy things, I believe, is important. So mm, I, being present. Yeah, I'm going to have a very short and easy work week, and I'm going to try my hardest to enjoy those days as mm. much as possible. So that's what I'm looking forward to, just you know, enjoying the short work week and um, focusing on getting my health and my mental health in order for the next week or two nice. I think I'm gonna stick to that that sounds awesome that, those are great great things to look forward to and focus on um, definitely ties into ties into the message from last session <laughs> uh, focusing on self for sure mm -hmm. that's important uh, for me oh update planned vacation looking forward to that oh, okay <laughs> um cause I've been dying for one um so what are you heading to Somewhere with sand okay. and heat, because <laughs> oh, oh, I need it. Um, but most importantly, looking forward to um, spending some time away from New York, mm -hmm. spending time away from my normal environment, spending time away for from just work and not having to think about responsibilities is what I really want to do. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping that that new space. Um, for whatever short period of time um, gives me the opportunity to maybe process some things that I haven't been able to mm -hmm. and get, you know, maybe that, that new air will help me um, just, you know, unlock some, maybe some thoughts or whatever that I haven't um, been able to do while I've been here. Mm -hmm. And hopefully I'm hoping to come back refreshed and ready to tackle whatever is coming towards me. Well, you got this. When I get back. I appreciate that. Um, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely feel a lot more grounded now than I did, I guess, in past weeks. So that feels, that's good. I'm definitely progressing, and I'm happy about that. So that's what I'm looking forward to, a nice, uneventful work week and mm. the vacation at the end of it. <laughs> mm. Um For today's Connection Corner, I wanted to leave you all off with this quote. My next relationship will be my last. So I'm not looking. I'm not worried. I'm not rushing. I want this love to find me, learn me, want me, need me, and love me in slow motion. We have forever to go. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for tuning into this week's episode of The Oasis Podcast. I hope you were able to find something that resonated with you on your journey. Don't forget to subscribe, share this episode, and like us on Instagram at The Oasis Podcast. If you have any questions or comments, direct message us on Instagram or 
email us at ajsoasis at gmail.com. Again, that's A-A-Y-J-A-Y-S-O-A-S-I-S at gmail.com.